Hello and welcome back to module two. Simon here and today in this module we're going to have a look at how to find and connect with your ideal prospects on LinkedIn. So let's dive straight into my profile now, into my account. I'll show you exactly how we do this. Okay, so here we are inside my profile now and we've got two main ways of finding our ideal prospects and future clients on LinkedIn. Okay, the first way, uh, if you can just follow along with me, it's pretty straightforward once you know where to find the things. One of the big problems with LinkedIn is they're really good at hiding all the functionality, which is part of the problem for most people actually making a start and getting traction with LinkedIn. Where is all the stuff? Where, where are all the things that you can use? And um, yeah, quite honestly, LinkedIn are pretty lousy at making it obvious where to find things. Uh, they're really good at hiding things out. They're really good at changing things around for no reason and no warning. So it can be a little bit frustrating on that front, but this module is going to show you exactly how to do it. So we're going to look at two strategies. The first one is a straightforward search function. The second one is the underground strategy that we've developed that really makes a massive difference, both in terms of the quality of the people that you're connecting with, but also the connection rate that you achieve once you've got a really good profile. So what I would say is don't move on to this step until you're absolutely delighted with the profile that you've got that you can't do any more on it at the moment to make it any better because what we're going to start doing now is finding people to invite to see our profile okay so i'm just assuming you've finished your profile now and you're really happy with it and you're ready to move forward to start to find people so how do we do that well the first strategy is if you go up to the search bar up here and click on that and it's sh you should get a drop down saying people if you don't just type people it would help if i could spell wouldn't it no anyway, i'll type people in there takes a minute to load so as you can see i've got nearly 16 million people that i can connect with Oh, that's far too many. What we want to do now is filter that down, refine what we're looking at and who we're connecting with. So we'll go over to all filters over here and click that button. As you can see, it only lights up. Any of these buttons only light, light up. Everything's gray on LinkedIn. It's either blue or very gray. And it looks, you know, most people think that gray is inoperative. On LinkedIn, it doesn't mean that. It's just the color scheme that they have chosen, unfortunately. So what we're looking to do at this stage is to find new people to connect with. So let's just talk about first, second and third degree connections. First degree connections are people we're already connected with. I'm sure you know this, but some people still are not aware what, of what the difference here is. So let's cover it. First degree connections are people you're already connected with. Your second degree connections are the people you can connect with by being connected to your first degree connections. So your second degree connections are the first degree connections of all your first degree connections. Okay, and it's second degree connections that we're looking for because they're only one step removed. LinkedIn views that the one degree of separation is fine. It's likely that you've got good reason to connect with them. Third degree, they make much more difficult because they're two stages of separation from the people you're already connected with. So for our purposes, we ignore third degree connections. They will become our second degree connections in time. But as I say, LinkedIn makes it really quite difficult for us to connect with those. So what we're looking for is new first degree connections. So we're looking for our 
people that stand as second degree connections at the moment. Okay. Now I'm in the UK. I also prospect in the US. So what I would normally do is to say, I want to find people in the UK and the US in the locations area. But let's just mention these other fields. Connections of, you may want to find people who are already connected to a specific person. Okay, so you may be, let's say, drilling down into a specific company that you want to infiltrate. Or that on occasion what happens is somebody says, oh, can you can connect with this friend of mine? The easiest way to find them is to put that initial person in there and see if you can connect. But largely, I do not use these other fields. I'm just going to show you exactly what I do and what I've taught lots of other clients to do. Uh, current companies here, again, we don't use this very much, but I'll just mention it because it's there. Um, if you're looking for people in a specific company, you can enter that company name in there and it will bring it up. Okay, past companies. I've never used this. None of my clients have ever used, but it's there to be used if the situation arises. Profile language, really, they're all going to be English, most probably, but occasionally other languages do crop up. I've never had to use it. None of my clients have had to use it. Schools, we've never had to use. What we do use is industries. And one of the industries I target heavily is the professional training and coaching sector. So let's enter that in there. And you can see it's by entering it into the field there, it's brought it up as selected. And you can select others. So this is why we create our profile first, because we then know by creating our profile specifically for our target audience, we know exactly what to enter into these fields. So I'm just going to leave it as professional training and coaching. You can see we've now, now got a criteria count of four. And then at the bottom, we've got these fields that we can enter. Contact interest, I've never had to use that. Services, uh, that can be used occasionally to further refine down the search. I tend not to, but uh, this, you may, depending on how specific you're being and, and exactly who you're wanting to connect with, then that is certainly uh, a field that you may want to consider adding into your search criteria. So you can search by name. You can search by company, you can search by school. What I usually filter by is the title. Now, not everybody puts their title. Most people do, but not everybody puts their title in their profile, just to be aware of that. And I'm looking for people at the head of the tree. So there will either be CEO or managing director. Now, it's a word here. When you put the keyword, if you like, the word that you're looking for in quotation marks, as managing director is here, LinkedIn will look specifically for that phrase. Okay, so if you're, say, putting CEO in and it doesn't really bring up the results you're expecting, one thing you can go back and do is put CEO in quotation marks, wrap it in quotation marks and see what if that makes your your search results more specific i'm going to leave it as it is for the moment i know it works for me so uh, i'm not going to uh, dwell on that any further so we've got our five criteria let's just recap what they are so i'm looking for people i'm not yet connected with but are connected to my first degree connection so i can connect with them very quickly linkedin allowed that in the US and the UK, in the professional training and coaching sector, and who 
say that they are the CEO, the head of their company in their profile, and then hit apply. And that's gonna turn away and come up with a count of the number of people I can connect with that match that criteria. So I can connect with a good number of very targeted people. We don't want a big list because we don't need a lot of people. It's better to have a targeted list and fewer of them than a big list that isn't well targeted. Okay, now you can see that I've already been working on this list because it's saying invitation sent, invitation sent. But one or two people have come up as I can connect with. So let's skip a little way forward and hopefully to a clean list that is unconnected. It might take me a little while to get there. Let's go up to page eight. And you'll see the same thing when you've been working through through your connection list. Okay. So what we need to do now is start to connect with these people. Let me show you the copy we've developed over actually literally years of trial of trying different approach methods, different approach messages, and we've come to one that works far better than any other. Let me show you what that is now. Okay, so this is the message we've developed as a connection message that has worked head and shoulders at above any other uh, that we've tried and tested in the past. So I recommend just copy this piece of um, messaging and use it for yourself. There's really no need to change it at all for your purposes. Uh, other than maybe you may want, not want to say how oh, business is good. You can play around with that at the moment. Uh, uh, you can play around with that um, as you wish. So let's look at what's going on in this message here. It says, hi, obviously you enter their name there. I noticed your profile on LinkedIn and it seems we have a number of shared contacts. So I thought it might benefit, sorry, I thought we might benefit from connecting. So what's going on there? Well, first of all, when you hit connect, then LinkedIn will put up a standard invitation message. Now, Whenever I receive a connection invitation from somebody out there in the ether, the vast majority do not change that message. Therefore, it is completely unpersonalized. Yeah, they've just hit send, 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 send. I don't want to connect with anybody like that. So part of standing out from the crowd, and it's really easy to do, is this extra little step creating a personalized message because the vast number of people who will be trying to connect with your target people are not doing it. But let's look at the psychology that's going on in that line and a half. Firstly, I noticed your profile. In first, you actually had a look at it. It seems we have a number of connections. In first, you have a look at it even deeper. But of course, you've got a number of connections because they're a second connection of yours. They may only have one, but usually you've got two or three at least. Okay, so there's good reason then for them to say, okay, yeah, if we've got shared contacts, then yeah, maybe we should connect. But they're also going to see what you're about. As we mentioned in module one, they're going to see exactly what you bring to the table, how you can help them. So it's a more complete package that you're presenting to them at the connection invitation stage than most of the other people who will be performing the same uh, strategy and process in front of your prospects. So I thought we might benefit from connecting. Oh, business is good. So it's a very friendly message. It's personalized. It infers you've done a little bit of research and that you know there are shared contact, contacts. So I'm going to copy that and then hop back into LinkedIn. And then I'm going to connect with a few of these people. So we add a note, and it's the note we've connect, 
we've uh, copied by Chuck and send. That's number one done. Let's choose Ro Ch uh, Ron. Now, if you hit send here, Ron is just going to get the standard LinkedIn connection message, which is very bland, very boring, and it's what most people, most other people will have sent in. So we want to add a note. Copy our standard message in there. Say hi, Ron. So you can see how very quickly you can just rattle through and send to. Okay. So we think oh, we've got another one down here. Actually, I'm not going to choose Effie because I know Effie personally. Just uh, uh, I just realised that. Uh, nor Bodhi either. I'm in the conversation with Bodhi. So as you're working through, it's worthwhile just quickly scanning who they are. Don't go through it like an automaton. Are you already in contact with them? Uh, do you do you already know them? Have you already done business with them, or do you not want to do business with them? Um, so let's have a look at uh, Michael. We've already sent an invitation to in the past. Jenneth, um, yeah, why not? She's CEO. You just never know. She fits the profile. We don't know what Jenneth does. However, the object of the exercise here is to present ourselves in front of Jenneth and let her make the decision. Okay, don't second guess people. You'd be amazed, you'd be really surprised at who comes forward as being interested, who you may not have actually chosen if you had been too choosy. So this is all about, now we've got a really good profile and a really nice approach letter. This is about allowing the person we're trying to connect with make the decision so that they are coming towards us and not us chasing them. Okay, I'm going to miss this one, Heroes Wales here, because there's no way we can personalize that. Um, and, you know, it doesn't appeal to me. For, there's something not right there. Um, we can't write Dear High Heroes. It just doesn't look right. So I'm going to skip that one but I'm going to write to Richard here and invite him. Okay. Great. So next one I'm going to show you how to do is how to connect with the followers of your competitors or your fellow thought leaders. This is an underground strategy we've developed that absolutely skyrockets both your connection rates, but also the quality of your connections. Because if you think about it, if you're piggybacking on the followers and the engaged people of your competitors, they're already to a degree pre-educated. Why are they following your competitor? Because they're interested in the subject. They're interested in how it works, that kind of helps. So you haven't got to run quite so fast or work quite so hard to educate them in how you may be able to help. You can pitch in with a different approach and a more timely approach possibly than your competitor, competitor does. So let's have a look now at how you can do that. So the first thing you want to do is go up to your profile area here where it says me. Because when we're visiting our competitors pages, we really don't want them to know that we've been snooping around, do we? And this is how we disguise ourselves. So hit, hit, hit the down button and then you go to settings and privacy. Click that. That opens up in a different area. And then we go over to visibility over here in the left hand side. So click that and then conveniently right at the top it says profile viewing options. 
and we go into there. Okay. And this is what you sh should see. Obviously, you will see yourself there and not me. <clears throat> but what you want to do is just scroll down and hit the radio button next to just jump back up anonymous LinkedIn member. Okay, that's the one you want to have activated when you're going to look at your competitors or other people that you maybe wouldn't you wouldn't want them to know that you have looked at their profile. Always set that back. But do remember when you finish this exercise, reset it back to how it was before. Otherwise, it's going to look very odd to other people, to people who are coming to your profile if you're marked as anonymous. So do make sure when you finish this exercise, always go back and reset it, okay? So we can click back up here, there's a convenient button that says back to LinkedIn. Okay. And I'm going to go into Holly's profile. Holly Sessiani is also a LinkedIn expert here in the UK. Now, what I want to do is to have a look at Holly's activity. So if we scroll down past her about section, you can see this activity section here. Okay, if you click see all, we go into this area. So it's automatically set to all activity. So it's worth having a look around here before we go any further, and saying, okay, what has Holly be get, been getting traction on? What content is working for her? And we'll go back to this in the uh, final module of the program of creating your content and power posts. We can use a similar strategy to this to have a look what's working for others and replicate the same thing. Okay, so that post has got 26 likes and three comments. That is how old? Uh, it's just under a day old. So that was posted yesterday. Um, a day before. Um, this is a post that uh, by uh, this chap here that Holly was active in. It's not her own post. So it's interesting to look what your competition are active in and interested in. Um, this is one that Holly has liked. Again, another one that she's liked. Okay. So it just gives you a good idea of what your competition are up to and active on on LinkedIn. Really good, useful background. Okay, let's have a look at Holly's post. So we see the one that we just looked at comes up top there because it's in chronological order. Then she posted two days before, two comments, 17, likes um, and then a week before 13 comments and 29 likes now i'm going to just use the most recent one because i repeat this process regularly okay so what we're interested in is the people who have engaged with this piece of content that holly's put out because holly's subject like mine is LinkedIn, is highly likely these people at some level are going to be engaged and interested in LinkedIn marketing. So if we hover over the comment section and right click, sorry, we don't right click, we just click on it and it opens up. Okay, we've got Michael Riley content creations. So yeah, CEO. Now that's a follow. I'm not interested in following people. I'm interested in 
connecting. So I'm not going to open Michael's up. But Tiago, if I right click on Tiago, it says open the link in a new tab. Okay. That's great. So let's have a look. Those are the, the people who commented. Let's have a look at the likes. So William, I'm con connected with. Christian, I'm connected with. Phil, I'm connected with already. Josh, hmm, startup financial mentor. Yeah, there's good reason there. So we hover over Josh's name, right click, open link in a new tab. Uh, director of RAD, uh, research and development at Lucy Studio. No, not R&D directors. That doesn't really fit into my, that, my target market. Um, document management expert, probably not. CEO, definitely. Let's open him up. Uh, Dino, national managing, manage, national manager partner acquisition at Marketplace Finance. Now he's a manager, so I'm not interested in managers. Current one Weber, entrepreneur, investor, yep. Looks like head of his company. Um, Julia is a third degree connection, so we're not interested in third degree. Anna is a marketing manager. I'm not interested in managers. Uh, junior software engineer, no, not a decision maker. EBA advisor of the year, ah. Amazon best-selling author, speaker, millennial entrepreneur, definitely. That's a good prospect. Samuel, CEO, yeah, absolutely. Um, Parvez, doesn't really, don't know what they, what he does. Um, I help body conscious, this is Sam H. Time pressured women, yeah, that's a coach of some sort. Um, I'm writing content for clients, not very good English, discount rate, no, don't think so. Business development, Tiago, I think we opened Tiago up already, but I'm just gonna do it just in case. Um, Jack, yeah, founder of, so he's clearly head of the company, building profitable relationships, Bobby, yeah. Um, I help me people make their dreams come true. Sounds like a coach. Um, I know Joseph. Um, I help business clients land two to four high paying clients. Yeah. Okay, so you can see there's some really good quality people in here that we can very very quickly CEO Michael is CEO content creations yeah absolutely so we've got a range of tabs up here open ready to connect with so we just go in and pick up our message again copy that let's go into our first person here now Michael we don't want to follow anybody that's of no use to us at all. Keys is a follow, so we'll get rid of him. Fahim is a follow, so we'll get rid of him. There we are, Neil, connect. Okay, so we'll paste it in as we did with the first strategy and send. Okay. Bobby's a follow. So it's Jack. Okay, just how it the how it goes sometimes. Okay. Now, occasionally when you're doing this, you don't have uh, an, an enormous number. 
sometimes I've had, depending on who the thought leader is that I'm using at the time, sometimes I've had 50 or 60 that I can send. And what I find is that these people are so engaged on LinkedIn and so active, but they're so targeted that by the before the end of the process that I have actually got acceptances already coming in before I finish sending out all the connection invitations. So these are extremely active and I hope. Sorry, I, I, I'm a typical chap. I can't speak and type at the same time. So yeah, these very connected, very active people, very targeted people. And you find by the time you're, uh, very often by the time you're finishing this process, that people have already accepted your invitations. So there we are, That's, we'll finish this process off. We're nearly there now. You can see how uh, we've done Tiago thought he came up twice. But there we are, we've sent probably the best part of 10 really connect, really targeted connection invitations out extremely quickly. Now I'm just gonna make sure we show you how, how to do this, just to remind you, go out of the person's profile that you're, um, you're using for the exercise, go back into privacy, into visibility, profile viewing, and reset your profile. Okay, then go back to LinkedIn. Okay, so those are the two strategies to use to connect with new people. And what I would recommend is don't, it's entirely up to you, but I tend to use one strategy one day, the other strategy the next day because it's spreading your options. What you might find, depending on how, ta how targeted and how many uh, connections you find you need to make, you may prefer one over another. It may be that you prefer uh, finding your uh, competitors' connections more profitable, then great, concentrate on that. But to start off with, try both of these strategies see which works best for you because it's all about optimizing your results and then knees down refine optimize okay so that's how to find and connect with your ideal target prospects on linkedin what we're going to cover in the next module module three is then how to follow up how to engage with these people, how to message them and start to pull them towards you and your business. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed this. The action for this module is to get stuck in, review the content, start to apply it for your business, start to make those connection invitations and then you'll see a flood of those coming in. Okay, so, Let's move on to module three.